Morning guys, um, have a computer here, came from a uh, local business uh, in one of the uh, shopping centres, uh, was brought in on Saturday, apparently it's not powering on or not working, uh, so let's have a look, so I've put some power onto it, um, hit the start button, yeah, the fans are spinning, uh, so that's a, a good sign, there's some life in here, yeah, they've taken the hard drive out because there was a lot of uh, sensitive information on there. Um, and yeah, basically, uh, it doesn't boot. There's nothing on the, nothing on the screen. Um, I didn't hear any bleeps. Uh, does it have a speaker on this one? Um, can't see one built on the board. Um, no, <laughs> doesn't appear to have a speaker actually. <laughs> okay, that's a good start. So let's even find a, a speaker uh, and maybe the post analyzer card, and let's see if we can uh, figure out what this is doing. Oh, apparently, actually, it does have a speaker, um, but I've just connected uh, mine just in case the one in here isn't actually working. Yeah, so again, it powers on, but nothing happens. It's interesting to see if it powers off if I hold the power button. Yeah, it powers off. Uh, let's try uh, taking the RAM out and see if we can get some bleeps out of this without any RAM first. Okay, let's just give this a little go. No. No bleeps, not even without the RAM uh, connected in there, okay. Let's try uh, just disconnecting all the other uh, connectors as well uh, that are around here. Um, and we'll try, so we've basically just got the motherboard and processor and nothing else plugged into it basically, yeah. Just disconnect these uh, SATAs. Okay. Yeah, so that's basically down to all, all the basics now, just the motherboard. Uh, we can take the graphics card out as well. And see if we can get any bleeps out of this now, yeah. Uh, with just the uh, motherboard and processor. If not, we'll have to take the motherboard out and have a look to see if we can determine what's actually going on with it. Of course, it's fiddly to get the damn graphics card out as usual. <sighs> it's like they put the clips on these in the most awkward places to get graphics cards out. I can just about see the end of it. It's down under here somewhere. <sighs> No, <laughs> I've managed to release it, but not release the back of the uh, back of the cord. Yeah, you know it's proving so fiddly. I'm just going to take the motherboard out of this and let's have a look at it. Okay, so the board's out and cleaned. Oh, one moment, one camera frozen. That's better. I had to uh, get the machine out from under the the shelving and put a larger hard drive on because. Uh, the one that was on there was full of YouTube videos now, it was only a 500 gig. I've put one of the year, one terabytes out, if you remember the machine I repaired. Well actually the one I couldn't repair, yeah, yes it was, it was one I repaired um, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, the gaming machine that had the uh, GTX 970, uh, that graphics card is now in my, one of my PCs at home and uh, one of the one terabyte drives in this PC to store YouTube videos, so that's worked out quite well. Uh, the motherboard I've sold by the way. Uh, with some other parts, so that that actually came out rather good uh, deal. That one, okay. Uh, in fact, let's not put the graphics card on. Let's just uh, try this with its onboard graphics. So I've uh, got take this back off again. You put the little latch in this in the most awkward place to get to. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that was the point of the story. That's so. M since then, uh, the USBs were all settling down. I've plugged them into different ports. Yeah, hopefully stop the flashing on this camera. Uh, <coughs> it's kind of getting used to it, and then sometimes it's dropping the camera at the moment. Uh, okay, anyway, enough waffle. So here's our motherboard. Uh, let's have a speaker on there. Uh, let's connect a switch to this on power switch, and uh, let's see what it does now on the bench again. So no RAM, just the motherboard. On off switch should be there, I would think. Uh, pa powers on. Powered up on its own. And nothing. Run all the switch and shut it down. 
doesn't want to shut down actually. This motherboard's not behaving very well, is it? I'll switch it off at the uh, power. I said I get to switch on and not start, yeah, and I can start it myself with the with the switch and see what it does. Oh, oh no, it started again. Uh, let's get the uh, post analyzer as well. Let's uh, see what that thinks of this uh, motherboard. Yeah, let's let's uh, let's see what this uh, thinks of it. Okay, try this. Um, all zeros, nothing at me. Uh, uh, oh, some lights lit up. We can uh, we can put it in the other slot as well to be sure. There we go. Okay, power on again. Yep, started on its own without having to press the switch. All zeros. Okay, so there's obviously something wrong down here. Let's have a look at the um, the CPU, see if there's any thermal compound on this. Yeah, let's have a look at it. Well, I think the basic answer to that is, yeah, there is. It's sticky, but it's not a lot. Also, this didn't seem to be fitted properly to me. Uh, on the CPU. I'll clean all the dust up and we can try another processor in this. I'm sure this is a socket 775 so I've got a few processors that work in this. So let's just uh, eliminate there's a possibility of a faulty processor. Yeah I'm sure this was a socket 775. Uh, I've seen these motherboards quite regularly actually this one. The G31 ES2L. In fact I'm sure I've even got a, a working board the same as this. Uh, so it's a uh, Petrum dual core 2.6 gigahertz, yeah, and I've got quite a few 775 CPUs here, uh, but I've got some more dual cores, so um, this one's a, a, a dual core, let's just see if we can see it, dual core 2.2 something, um, E2200, uh, yeah, uh, this one is another Pentium dual core, E5400, yeah, a 2.7, probably slightly faster. Okay, let's have a quick look to see if either of these CPUs are actually uh, are compatible with our board. Just go over to the uh, screen capture. Yeah, let's hope the camera's all working properly. Okay, so it's the uh, GA uh, G31M um, ES2L. Uh, CPU support, yeah. Uh, CPU support. Okay, I normally go to this site, CPU CPUupgrade.com. It's come up the first on this one. Seems to be one of the better sites for telling you this sort of thing. So, the CPU that I have we can try is the... We have an E2200 as one of them. Uh, does that actually work in this board? I'm not sure it does. Core 2 Duo. No, possibly that doesn't actually work in this board. Okay. No, we've done all the Core 2 Duos. Let's have a get the other one. There's the E5400. Uh, See if that'll work in this board. Whoops, that's my phone close to the speakers making a bit of a noise. No, let me just go find a, a CPU that actually works in this motherboard, yeah? Okay, yeah, I was just looking in the wrong section, I was looking under Celeron dual core, dual core. so uh, e T E2200 was fine, yeah, and then the other one with E5400 was it, um, yeah, they're both fine, they'll work in this board. Okay, so let's just try another CPU, or try them both yeah and let's see if that gives us any joy I'm pretty sure these are good CPUs though so uh, CPU socket looks fine yeah no particular reason to expect oh, maybe just here a bit of dust or dirty let's see if I can just yeah it's gone now because you see there's a speck of dust on there yeah Okay, let's put our 5400 in, let's see if uh, 
we can persuade this to make any bleeps. Yeah, see if we get any sound out of it now. Right, so I've put a bit of heatsink compound on, just balance my fan on top, power on. What's it do now? It doesn't do anything because I've unplugged the power leads. <laughs> nice one, Richard. Okay, let's uh, try again with some power cables attached, yeah? Starts on its own again, which I don't particularly like. Uh, still reading all, all uh, zeros on the post analyzer, so still doing nothing, yeah. Um, have a quick, just check the CMOS battery, so I didn't think to do that earlier. Need, need to do that. Uh, let's have a look. I doubt this would stop it from booting, but we need to check it, yeah. I think we can call that dead. It's a bit low that is. Stick, a, stick another one. Let's even find a, another a good one. Yeah, so what this, is this any good? Yeah, 3.3, .3, much better. Stick that in. Okay. Power on. This time it doesn't start automatically. Starts when I press the button. And doesn't do anything. It's uh, all zeros, yeah, on the on the post analyzer. Okay. Have we got uh, the various voltages on this? Have a quick look. Uh, see if we got V core. Okay, let's have a look for V core. So I'm looking on the on these effects. One end should have twelve. One end will be ground, and the junction of two will be V core. So that's twelve. Um, so. Let's look on this end. 1.08, yeah. That'll be on here. Yeah, 1.08. So we've got V core, power on the CPU. Um, no ramming. You'd expect something to bleep, wouldn't you, really? Stick our uh, stick of ramming. Yeah, that's uh, the one that came with it. Does it do anything now? Power on. Uh, doesn't all so changing the CMOS battery stops that auto starting uh, th lock here. Uh, powers on. Nothing. Okay. Right. I've got another uh, motherboard, same as this. So what I'll do is let's just check to make sure the CPU and the RAM are okay. And if they are, uh, I might try uh, programming the BIOS on this. Um, Sometimes I've seen if a BIOS, if it can't read, it just sits there basically on zero, zero, yeah. You can find out by taking the BIOS off and trying booting the board, you'll see that's what happens. Um, if not, it probably, it probably just changed this board, it's probably for the cost of it, I'll just give them the other board, yeah. Okay, let me just get one and let's just try and make sure the CPU and the RAM are good. Okay, so this is their processor, this is my board. Uh, I haven't put the RAM in. I want to see if this, this bleeps. It's just bleepy, would think, yeah? Well, the post analyzer's running. Uh, and it's bleeping, yeah? So that, that board's running, yeah? So that looks, sorry. It looks like their CPU is good. Let's try their RAM. Okay, so I've put their RAM and I've connected my monitor, yeah? Uh, powers on, boot her up. Uh, let's see what it does now. Yeah, yeah, one bleep. You can see the post analyzer there. Yeah, and uh, I had a picture on the screen. Yeah, it's asking me to uh, insert the boot device. Okay, so we know their RAM's good. We know the CPU's good. Um, need to just check their graphics card now. It's uh, GVN95TOC, one gigabyte. Not sure what that is, maybe might as well just have a, a quick look just to see what that is out of interest. Yeah, let's have, let's have a nosy. Let's have a nosy. So it's a, a GA uh, N95 TOC. Okay. GA N95 TOC. Some sort of uh, NVIDIA card. Hmm. Mm. It's it's twelve euros. <laughs> uh, what actually is that? Hmm. 
yeah nvidia 9500 gt there we go um so yeah let's just uh let's just check that and see if that's working as well okay so their uh, graphics cards in isn't well now um just see that it boots up i think something yeah i've got one bleep out of it yeah there you go so yeah it, it's starting up yeah telling me i've got a single channel ram which is exactly what there is in there okay desperate failure of course okay so i think with this one we're going to make this a really short video just quick uh, computer diagnosis not really a repair um and i'll uh, i'll look at the motherboard because no doubt i'll get to keep it um but the customer can have this back now uh quick repair they'll be happy and uh, we've got something else we can look at a bit later i think i'll try uh reprogramming the bios size actually just to see if we have three out of three uh, gigabytes that won't start due to corrupted BIOSes. yeah okay see you very soon guys i've got another interesting video coming up right about now actually see you soon bye